some of you watching this thought, well, guess this is the end of Ghidorah. But this episode will basically prove the opposite. In fact, there are many clues found in the films and novels that foreshadow the return of Monster Zero. This video will walk you through the evidence and possibilities that the MonsterVerse has in store for this guy. If this is your first time here, please consider giving us a like and smashing that subscribe button. That said, sit back and get comfortable as we get ready to discuss the return of this epic Hydra Kaiju. Speaking of Hydras, check this creature out. This right here is a monster that, like Ghidorah, has many heads, each with its own abilities. This monster is the biggest and baddest new addition to Raid's huge boss roster. That's Raid Shadow Legends, the most awesome mobile game of all time. It's the best time to join because this game now has over 600 champions to choose from, each coming from unique factions and lore. And back to the Hydra, this crazy animal has unique, trippy mechanics on each of its heads, like pushing its own damage onto your own team, scaring the crap out of your champions, rotting them from the inside, concealing itself in a cloud of poison, and lots of other crazy things. Cutting off its head makes it vulnerable to damage, but again, like Ghidorah, this guy will grow a new head if you don't hurry. It's hard to beat this thing, but when you do, you will get some really dope prizes. My favorite faction are the Lizard Men, because they look like humanoid dinosaur kaiju things. <laughs> One time, I spent hours going through all these well-designed champions. This month, Raid is giving a super limited edition champion to every player, like esports legend Simple, who will be available between now and January 28th to new and old players. So don't miss out on this OP champion and all the festive activities and tournaments that will help you add more epic champions to your collection. So if you're ready to raid and wreck this Hydra, click on the link in the description now or scan this QR code to get the Epic Hero Aina 200k silver, 1 XP boost, 1 energy refill, and 1 Ancient Shard to summon an awesome champion as soon as you start playing. Oh, and find us under username Goji and you could join our clan. Thanks to Raid Shadow Legends for supporting this channel. And now, let's get back to Ghidorah. To understand how this guy will come back, you really need to know your facts about MonsterVerse Ghidorah. The most important being its neurological system. Every part of Ghidorah's body contains a trace of neurologic matter, meaning that this creature really doesn't require a brain to retain memory. In some ways, its whole body can act as a brain. Kind of. Obviously, these creatures' real brains will host a great deal of cognitive activity, there's no doubt about that. But the next most powerful mnemonic organ in this animal's body is its skull. The official novelization of GVK states that the bony matter in Ghidorah's skulls is just as vital to Ghidorah's consciousness as the brain tissue itself, meaning that these skulls are technically an active part of the brain rather than just being a brain casing. This is actually a really big deal. Why? Because this fact was precisely why Mechagodzilla was able to become self-aware. More on this later. The last fact about Ghidorah we really need to cover is his regenerative capabilities. Yes, we already know that this guy can regenerate basically anything, but there's more to this. In King of the Monsters, we see this head, popularly known as Kevin, grow back along with its memories and consciousness. So it knew it had been decapitated. This is because, as mentioned earlier, once its head grew back, the neurons that spread all over its body contributed to the regainment of his previous memories. This level of regenerative capability is due to its alien nature, not seen in life forms on the Earth's surface. Now that we're up to speed with this knowledge, let's discuss how this bad boy might return in the future. Ghidorah's Second Skull It had three heads. This next was so long that it communicated telepathically. And there's one here, another one inside of that, that thing. Did you catch that? So, what Bernie was referring to was a second Ghidorah skull inside of Mechagodzilla. If you didn't know already, there are two, yes, two skulls involved here. But was this just Bernie rambling about stuff not knowing what he was talking about? No, he was actually right this time. The film adaptation of Godzilla vs. Kong unfortunately left out a lot of details. But the novelization didn't. In the beginning of the book, Walter Simmons, CEO of Apex Cybernetics, had an in-person meeting with a shady individual who was wanted by many world governments. Sound familiar? Yep, this is no other than Alan Jonah, the cold-hearted fella from King of the Monsters who purchased one of Ghidorah's heads in the post-credits. 
In this scene, Al and Jonah offered Simmons not one, but two heads. Simmons was actually upset that he didn't have all three. So the question is, where did this second one come from? This skull belongs to Kevin, who was decapitated by Godzilla off the coast of Isla de Mara. The other head was most likely found by Alan Jonah and his crew at an undisclosed site. It could have been anywhere, but the most likely place would have been somewhere in Antarctica, close to these locations, the Hollow Earth Entry Portal and Monster Zero's observation facility where Godzilla defeated Ghidorah long ago. But why would there be many heads just lying around? The answer is, again, Kevin. That's right, both of these skulls were probably Kevin's heads. How? The director, Michael Doherty, suggested that Kevin was the one who would regularly lose its head, literally, and that this had happened so much that Kevin got skilled at regenerating his head. So, that said, it's safe to assume that during combat with another titan like Godzilla, Ghidorah would have regularly lost this particular head, meaning that there could be lots of other skulls lying around waiting to be discovered. Now, what does this mean for the MonsterVerse timeline? A new mechanized titan. That's right, guys. This episode of a homicidal mech might just happen again. Note that the most important components of this weapon were the two skulls, each housed in the mech itself and the control room. These communicated telepathically via psionic uplink, which was commanded by the pilot Ren Serizawa. After Kong finally put this robot out of commission, this skull and maybe the skull housed inside the mech's head weren't completely destroyed. Yeah, the actual neurologic matter is still there, meaning that it theoretically could be used again to build another Mecha Godzilla. But why stop there? We just discussed that there could also be more skulls waiting to be found, courtesy of Kevin's recklessness. Enough skulls to build Mecha Ghidorah, a titan composed of ancient heads brought back to life against the G-Man. This would be a mechanized titan fueled by hate, anger, and revenge. If Apex Cybernetics decides to play God again and hook these skulls up with this brand new, unpredictable Hollow Earth juice, the possibilities are endless. A new Kaiju. You heard that right, and no other Kaiju is better equipped to make a return than Ghidorah himself. If this Hollow Earth energy source is powerful enough, enough exposure to it could trigger its regenerative functions once again, slowly but surely regenerating a brand new body for Ghidorah. And with a bit of help from some of that new genetic engineering, perhaps something even stronger. This could be a larger incarnation of Ghidorah, perhaps something like a MonsterVerse rendition of a Kaiser Ghidorah, a much more different and powerful incarnation with proportions that dwarf any other kaiju ever seen in the MonsterVerse. Godzilla would then be reintroduced with what would now be his arch nemesis. Bringing back Ghidorah using this method is plausible in this universe, but there is another outlandish way that Ghidorah could return without any human help. The Monster X Species This may be hard to believe, but the novelization of King of the Monsters hints at there being more of these guys somewhere, or at least gives us that idea. In the field notes of Dr. Ling Chen, we find this excerpt. It is said that he came from another place, the sky maybe, a star, that he was a younger son that would not inherit territory, so he came here to find his own. This basically implies a few things. In order to be a younger son, you also need to have older siblings, meaning more Ghidorahs and parents. Another implication is that these go out and claim their own territories or planets, and our Monster Zero just happened to pick the wrong one. After getting clapped so many times, it's no wonder that a future Ghidorah would want some hard-earned revenge. Admittedly, this concept is a bit outlandish for this universe, but the point remains, if the MonsterVerse continues, so should Ghidorah. It is not surprising that the creators of this universe still to this point refuse to put a definitive end to this monster. After what we learned today, it is evident that completely finishing off Ghidorah is almost impossible. Its body can be destroyed, but its memories and its purpose will always exist. By this definition, Ghidorah is not a physical kaiju made of flesh and bone. Ghidorah is a conscience, a menace forever haunting Godzilla.